Hi, Rasa. This is David Cohn. I hope it's okay if I answer via video. It's uh, easier and faster for me, and I can give sort of more full answers. Um, this is the first time I'm actually uh, looking at your questions, so they are my honest, earnest reactions. Um, at the moment, Spotus is under construction. Uh, please, could you identify what were the issues the company faced, what was and what wasn't supported? So, uh, I guess. Uh, the first thing to, to point out is I actually have not been involved in Spot Us uh, for two over two years now. Um, I was the founder of Spot Us and uh, launched it in 2008 um, and ran it until 2011. Um, and it, in 2011, late 2011, it, it was uh, acquired by um, American Public Media, APM, which um, here in the States, I think you're in the UK. Uh, they're kind of like NPR. Um, they're a public broadcasting company. And uh, about, yeah, so, uh, and I think in the end, I can't speak on behalf of APM, but I think, you know, APM had to make a choice about whether or not they wanted to be uh, content creators or uh, the creators of platforms. And Spot Us is very much a platform. And I think they saw themselves as content creators. And so they sort of, weren't sure what to do with Spot Us shortly after they had acquired it. Um, and I left about four months after that uh, um, transition happened. So I'm not 100, you know, I think that they wanted to reassess. Uh, they they, shut, they sh shut down the ability to uh, donate and things like that uh, a couple months ago. And I think they wanted to reassess um, whether or not, what, what they want to do with it. And again, I can't really speak 100% to that. I'm, I haven't been involved. Uh, what are the new business models you're considering? Again, on behalf of Spot Us, um, I I am not involved anymore. I really don't know. Um, I can uh, well, and I see your next question: Has Kickstarter influenced the organization? Um, yeah, to some degree. I mean, I think um, I wouldn't say Kickstarter so much as the proliferation of crowdfunding. Um, when Spot Us was first started, and I first started talking about it, crowdfunding was kind of a strange idea. I really had to take. 10, 15 minutes to explain the concept to people, and now uh, I don't really have to. I think uh, there are other players now in the space as well. You have Kickstarter and Indiegogo, right? Um, and one is for creative projects, one is kind of for everything. And then there's others. There's something called Beacon now, which is um, specifically for journalism. Um, uh, there's one called um, Uncoverage, which is also for specifically for journalism. There was a project called um, Emphasis, E-M-P-H-A-S, dot is uh, which was strictly for photojournalism crowdfunding I also saw someone uh, some someone something yesterday called uh, it was called patrons or patronage or something like that um, where you could provide ongoing you know five dollars a month kind of support um, so there are a lot of different plays now on crowdfunding and I think that's a really good thing a really positive thing there are a lot of different ways where where it can be uh, rethought um, depending on the type of thing right so for someone who wants to do an ongoing project for example um, Kickstarter is not really the best method, right? Because Kickstarter is a one-time, you know, a one-off essentially. And for a lot of journalists, again, um, the beat method is kind of more familiar for them, right? I will cover a certain topic for a whole year, right? Um, or, or for forever as long as I have enough sponsors, right? Enough patrons who are giving $5 a month or, or something like that. Uh, you've said essential to understand, however, is that Spot Us is not a news organization, nor am I an editor. Uh, what it will be is collaborative market list, the first blah, 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 blah. That is what I said. Uh, do stories need to be edited? Do they need to be published in a traditional way? Once the story got funded, how would it draw further engagement, keep a connection with the funder? Sure. So do stories need to be edited? Yeah. Um, we would often uh, find uh, sponsoring publications. Um, and uh, in exchange for doing the editing, uh, they would be the ones to publish it. Um, so that was often uh, an arrangement that we worked out most of the time, I would say. Um, if we didn't have a publication, excuse me, we would find um, a volunteer editor, um, either a journalism professor or a retired journalist or something like that, to work with the reporter. Um, but almost all the stories um, had an editing process um, that just made them better. Um, so, uh, you know, the question is, do they need to be edited? I don't, I mean, you could ask that question to anybody. It has nothing to do with crowdfunding, right? Do stories need to be edited? I don't know. Do they? Uh, sure. Or not. I don't know. It depends on the publication, on the story, on the journalist. Um, how it's funded, I think, has little, 
uh, influence on whether or not the story needs to be edited. Right? That's a question you can kind of ask to anybody anytime. Uh, do they need to be t published in a traditional way? They need to be accessible. Um, and in some questions, I mean, you could say that they only need to be accessible to those who funded it, right? Um, Spot Us, it was, they were published in a traditional sense in that they were a um, accessible to the entire public. Um, the one challenge with that is you do come across what's sometimes called the um, tragedy of the commons, or it's, uh, I guess, the quandary of the commons in this case. Um, the classic example given is one of a lighthouse, right? So a lighthouse benefits all the boats that use, you know, a certain uh, area. Um, so the question then is, is who's going to pay for it, right? Because everybody wants somebody else to pay for it. They all want it. They all need it. But nobody wants to pay for it. Um, and the journalism uh, in that sense, right, if it's accessible to everybody, you really are paying for a commons, a public good. Um, and that can be a, a really interesting kind of um, marketplace. There's a lot of studies on, on that. I forgot exactly what the term is called. I think it's uh, has something to do with the commons or uh, public good. If you look up Lighthouse and, and that scenario I just gave as well, you'll be able to find it. Um, once, so once I got started, to kind of draw further engagement. So um, once they were published, further engagement would most likely happen off Spot Us, right? Because the funding was done, it was published. The journalists would often continue to cover that that kind of story or that topic, um, as well as you know there'd be comments and things like that. During the course of the reporting is where most of the engagement happened. So when someone was working on a story, they would publish updates, so to speak, and that would help their fundraising as well as engage the funders, right? People that had already donated a little bit would then see the updates as they came in, the reporting that happened. Uh, what are the unforeseen lessons you have learned on the way? Um, it's kind of hard to answer that. I mean, it's there was obviously a lot that I learned, um, and many of it was unforeseen. Um, but I mean, again, I'm I've got two years sort of critical distance from Spot Us, um, uh, as well as that itself was a four year endeavor. So you're kind of asking me about something that happened over the course of six years of my life, um, or what were the unforeseen lessons of the last six years of my life, uh, or actually the four years of my life which are now two years away. I mean, the one thing I would say is more, again, around, uh, has nothing to do with crowdfunding per se, but just starting something from scratch. Um, uh, you know, and that is that you have to be emotionally prepared for the highs and lows of a startup. Um, and Spot Us was a startup nonprofit. I like to joke that, that was two strikes already. Um, but, you know, I mean, you just, it's its a lot of work and, and, you know, all things are a lot of work, right? All journalists work hard, but I do think that there's a kind of emotional fragility um, to working on something from, from, from scratch uh, that has a kind of uh, different, you know, arrangement that is really trying to push boundaries. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just looking at the, this, it doesn't look like it's a question. If you reply to that, I'm also working on two, on two publishing startups and I'd like to share them. Yeah, you should feel free to contact me anytime. Um, I think if I, uh, I, uh, I saw briefly, I think you're based in the UK, so it would be very hard for you to make me cookies, although I do appreciate the offer. Um, oh, yeah, you're from London. So if I ever come out to London, then yes, I want my cookies. Um, but, uh, or if you ever come out to the Bay Area. But in the meantime, uh, you, know, you should feel free to contact me anytime. I'm, I'm more than happy to chat. I hope this is okay, but trying to type all these answers up would have taken me... Uh, uh, a long time so this way I can give you like full answers um, without um, you know sort of sucking away uh, half the day alright hope all is well cheers or cheerio whatever they would say in London